Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. 2020 has decided to be one of those years that tests myself and my family beyond all belief. Um, so reading has sort of taken a back seat to everything that has been going on. So today I'm here to do a quick catch up, just kind of get you guys on board with what's been going on in my life so that you understand where I've been. Talk to you about a few books that I have been reading and uh, talk to you really about how reading has been going in 2020 and just give you an overall update with everything that's been going on. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you guys are doing very, very well. I hope your reading year has started with a bang. I've said it in a number of previous videos, 2020 has so, ama so many amazing titles coming out, so many books that I want to eventually get to and read um, that I hope you guys are really, really enjoying them. So today I'm here to do a sort of a catch up video to give you guys a little bit of an update about what's been going on in our life and uh, reasons for sort of sporadic content. Um, and then talk to you a little bit about a few of the books that I picked up recently in an attempt to get back into reading. And you guys will understand all of that as we go forward. Now, if you have been a fan of my channel or watched my videos over the years, you know that 2020 has been rough. If you follow me on any other um, social media, it's just been a hard year for us personally. It started on New Year's Day with the passing of my grandmother. Um, my grandmother and I, if you guys know, uh, you probably know, very, very close. Um, and that sort of de derailed me as a reader. She was my reading friend. Um, her and I have been reading together for years and years, 43 years to be exact. Um, so I took a little bit to get started in 2020. It was a hard, hard transition for me. Um, but then I thought things were getting back on track in February. I thought we were headed in the right direction. And then recently, um, our oldest boxer, Baxter, who you guys will remember if you've been around since the beginning, he was one, he's been in a number of my videos. Um, he was in one of my very first videos. I actually just celebrated my three year YouTube anniversary, funny enough. Um, he got diagnosed with cancer and it took him very, very quickly. We actually had only a few weeks with him and he went downhill very quickly. And last weekend, um, we unfortunately had to put him to rest, which if you guys know, my husband has had Baxter since he was six weeks old. So Baxter was 11 when he passed. He's been in part, my, part of my life now for six years. So um, it was a huge loss, a huge loss to our family. And the kids, my fur children, my three dogs, are very integral into my home reading life. They're very much the, they all pile on me, they all fall asleep while I'm reading. It's very much an activity that I do with them quite often. Um, and other things, as you can imagine, we all have sort of patterns and stuff that we do with our, uh, with our dogs and our cats. Um, so it was very hard, very hard to even really want to read because of all of the emotions that came up with the passing of Baxter. So I have been a little bit off kilter. I just have not been able to get myself back and focused and ready for all that comes with being a person who has a booktube channel. I'm finally starting to get there. Um, this video will be the first. I'll probably be putting out quite a few over the next few days because I am a bit behind. Um, but it's still, there's a lot of sadness. Our house is not the same. Um, so it's sometimes hard to uh, want to do anything other than binge watch television and play games on my phone. And if you know me in my personal life, to, th to th even think that there's a game on my phone that I am playing ad nauseum is rather ridiculous because that is not me at all, but it has happened. I just play this game on my phone. We binge watch this one sitcom. And um, that has been my life uh, for the last week since Baxter passed. So there's been a lot of difficulty on trying to find time to make content, trying to make content by reading. Um, but that doesn't mean I haven't been reading some really good books. So I do want to share that with you. And at the end of this video, I'm going to do a giveaway. So I hope you guys stick around 
so that we can talk about that. So one of the hardest things for someone like me as the reader that I am when I'm going through a time where I'm sad is I tend to like and I am attracted to books that have sadder, darker, uh, melancholy type content. Well, when you are feeling melancholy, those are not truly the books that you always want to read. Um, so sometimes I would be in a state and I'd be looking for something to read and I would just, I would be dri dri drawn to a certain type of book and then it would make me sad and then it would just sort of go down from there. But there are three books that I'm currently reading right now that have really sort of been able to sort of get me through. And they are three very different books. Now, they, uh, one of them is a very, very sad in a lot of ways. Um, however, sort of the brilliance of it sort of gets me through it and listening to the author speak to the topic. Um, I'm reading a short story collection at this moment, and I'm also reading a ginormous, <laughs> ginormous fantasy novel. Um, so I'm really all over the place. I'm just trying to find ways to escape into books, but not really putting any sort of parameters on myself to allow myself to get back to the world that I love so very, very much. So there we go. Let's talk about some books. That was a little bit of a sad opening, so I apologize for that. Um, my husband and I have asked 2020 as nicely as we can. Um, we need a break. Um, 2019 ended with a lot of tragedy in our life. 2020 has started with a lot of tragedy in our life. So we're done. We would appreciate it, 2020, if you gave us a break for the rest of the year. Please, please, please. So let's talk about books. Let's talk about something exciting and fun. So I am reading three books currently. The first book that I'm reading is a short story collection called The Dominant Animal. And this is by Catherine Scanlon. This is coming out from F. SG in April. So April 7th, 2020. Now, you guys will remember that I talked about Catherine Scanlon's first book, August Fog, uh, August 9 Fog, that came out from FSG last year. I absolutely adored that one. This is her first sort of short story collection. Now, as you know, I always struggle a little bit with how to describe short story collections, but I will say, if you are a fan of sort of that black mirror, sort of twilight zone -y, sort of feeling, um, then this is probably a short story collection that you are going to like very, very much. A lot of it is, I read the short story, I'm blown away by the prose. She's an amazing, amazing writer. But then at the end of it, I'm like, what the heck just happened? And I have to read the story again. And there's so many layers and discussions and it's really, really good. But most of the time I sit there after the first reading and go, hmm, I'm going to need to read this again. And I am totally blown away by sort of the talent that just oozes off the page. So this is Catherine Scanlon's The Dominant Animal out from FSG on August, uh, April 7th, 2020. So there you go. That's got a cover too. Okay. Now I told you I was reading a book that sort of was sad in content, but the author is sort of a uh, breaking through for me. And that is the novel, The Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo Villa Vincencio. Um, and this book, on the book, it says it's coming out on May 19th, but I believe they've moved this date up. Um, I'm going to check. I think it's actually coming out in March. So I think you will be able to get your hands on this sooner than this copy says, um, and this beautiful cover. So what is this book? I'm calling it sort of a meta- Fiction. So, who is Carla Cornejo Vela Vincencio? Um, she is one of the first uh, people from the the. Oh, oh, how do I say this? I'm like blah 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 blah. Uh, maybe I'll just read it and tell you how it says it here. Um, she came from Ecuador when she was five years old, and she became the first undocumented student admitted to Harvard. She was a DACA recipient, and she is currently a PhD candidate at Yale University. This book is fiction in one way and nonfiction in another. We get a lot of Carla's story coming. Her parents are both undocumented Americans. They came to America. They actually left her in Ecuador with family before they came here. She didn't come till she was five. And then she moved here and she uh, became uh, part of the uh, 
America and went through the school system. And as I said, she's doing very well for herself education-wise. Um, and so this is her story about being, her and her parents' story really, about being undocumented Americans in the United States. But what else she has done is she has interviewed hundreds of other undocumented Americans and really focused on their stories. And how this becomes fiction is she's combined their stories into like single people. So she interviewed a lot of um, undocumented labor workers that do like day labor. And then she combines their overall stories into sort of a single character to tell a narrative. Um, this book focuses on a lot of different important ways that undocumented Americans have affected and continue to affect the United States in ways that you probably don't even recognize. And also how the world, the United States really, um, how the difficulties of what they have to go through day and day. So I've read a section about how um, involved um, undocumented workers were in the 9-11 um, events. They were very involved in rescue, search and rescue and cleanup. They were brought in. Um, many of them had health issues afterwards because of all the stuff that they were um, uh, introduced to at uh, Ground Zero. Um, it talks a lot about uh, how uh, undocumented, undocumented Americans are taken advantage of by people who come by, hire them, never pay them for work, and why they're here. It talks a lot about sort of the economic and family reasons that drive them to come to the United States. There's a really interesting chapter where you learn about health and medicines and going to the doctor and how difficult that is for undocumented Americans and sort of different groups that have, are out there to assist and to aid them. Um, but really all of the hoops that they have to jump through in order to get just daily aid. Um, this book is, it's hopeful in you're meeting a group of people that are extremely strong and it is amazing what they go through to um, support their families, uh, change sort of the perspective, not perspectives, per trajectory of where their family can go. Um, Carla is an amazing example of her parents coming from Ecuador and now she's, you know, about to be graduate from Yale with a PhD. So that's sort of that American uh, dream aspect of it all. What can we do to help our children and get our children um, you know, a better life than we could have given them in the country that we came from. Um, but it also is heart-wrenching, um, the awful things that happen to them, the things they have to deal with on a day-in-a-day -day basis. Um, and it's just super educational. It's written in sort of a journalistic style. So if you like sort of narrative nonfiction, I kind of feel like this book will speak to you. Um, it will open your eyes to probably a lot of things um, if you uh, you're not really involved um, in the world um, of undocumented Americans, you may not realize. So it's one of those books that can also educate. Um, and it's just, it's really, really good. I have to put it down sometimes because I'm going to tell you, honestly, the topics are tough and sometimes it's frustrating and sad and heart-wrenching and all of that kind of stuff. But it's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's a book about a group of people that are instrumental to the country that we live in. So I'm loving it. It comes out from One World. I do believe it's now coming out in March. The book says it's coming out May 19th, but I think they moved it up. Please check um, and please pre-order it because I have a feeling that uh, you guys are going to really like this. So that's The Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo Villavincencio. And this is out from One world. Okay, so last but not least, as far as what I'm trying to read, is this mammoth book that I'm reading, and that is Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward. This is coming out from Orbit um, on um, April 7th as well, and just, I mean, just look at this. This book, I think, is 800 and something pages long. Yeah, it is a monster of a, a fantasy novel, but I have to be honest with you, it has been exactly what I needed at a lot of times. It is the story, let's just say, I'm going to tell you how the book starts, and that will sort of get you in the beginning. So at the beginning of the book, we meet a woman, a queen, or sort of a um, ruler of a part of the kingdom, who has rebelled against the government that is governing all of the rest of her territory. I think they call it... Um, you know how sometimes you forget uh, Republic. It's their Republic. Um, and she's being chased by by the army. It's her and her son. They're on horses. They're fleeing. And she stops by a little house where she picks up her daughter, her daughter who hasn't lived with her for some time. And they're racing off. They're trying to race off to safety. 
And in the end, they wind up getting caught. The mother winds up getting killed. She becomes sort of a martyr for her people. And her son and her daughter become sort of the puppet rulers of this part of the um, Republic, um, where they're really ran by the council that runs everything, but they're sort of there as figureheads. Um, we go into the time, it's been 15 years since the mother died, and it's whether or not these two children and what they're going to do to sort of inspire the people that live in their, in their part, their part of the country, um, and also what are they going to do? How are they going to live up to the legacy of their mother? Um, and then also we have another character, the man who actually killed their mother, is this knight. We learn in the very, very beginning that he has some sort of magical power, something that he's be able to do. And if it is found out that he can do that, um, he would be ostracized because it's against sort of the religious norm of the society. And it's going to, and all of this is going on, all of this political intrigue as another country is trying to invade. So all of those pieces, all of those pieces, and those three characters, the young girl, uh, the daughter, the son, and the man who killed their mother are going to come together to defend their country against an invasion is what I think is happening. Um, I am only, I think I'm like a hundred pages into this. Um, so I have a lot left to go. Really excellent world building. I will say some of the names are a little bit too similar for me. So in my head, I get some of the characters confused in the beginning because the names are a little bit too one in one. Um, but I've learned over the hundred pages to get through that. And um, I'm really invested. I'm truly enjoying this. Um, so if you are an epic fantasy lover and you're looking for your next big epic read, on April 7th, 2020, Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward is coming out from Orbit. Um, and I'm loving it. So I'll tell you guys how I finish it, uh, when I finish it, what I think about it. I have a feeling it's going to be the first in a ginormous trilogy. And uh, we'll go from there. So... Okay, let's do a giveaway. Let's try to change the mojo of uh, what has been going on in life. And let's talk about a couple of, well, it's actually one book that I'm going to be giving away two copies of. And that is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This is her um, memoir that she just put out. Both of these copies have been signed. Um, when I went and saw Carmen Maria Machado in person, I got her to sign two extra copies for you guys. Um, I will say that unfortunately, I'm just going to have to um, cap this as the United States. You have to be within the U.S. It's just so expensive for me to ship internationally. Um, this book cost me 23 um, U.S. dollars, and if I were to ship it to the U.K., it would cost me 23 dollars just to ship one book. Um, and um, yeah, so it's very expensive. So I apologize that I will not be able to um, send this internationally. So if you are a U.S. subscriber, um, you must be subscribed to my channel, and I must be able to uh, find that out. Please leave a comment below saying why you would like to read Carmen's book. And um, if you guys could do that and subscribe, I would really, really appreciate it. And I'm going to leave this open for two weeks. So two weeks from today is, let's see, the 22nd of April. I'm sorry, of March. The 22nd of March. On the 22nd of March, I will randomly pick two winners and I will mail you a copy of Carmen Maria Machado's In the Dream House. But you must comment below. You must be subscribed. And unfortunately, at this time, you must be in the United States. So I hope you guys are super excited about that. Thank you for listening to me. This has been a really long video. A lot of uh, things to talk to you guys about, as always. I could not do this without you guys. Um, I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all your support across my Instagram, my Twitter. You guys have been fantastic through this year and I cannot do it without you. If you are new to my channel, thank you so very, very much. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I hope you subscribe and I hope you stay around for more. And I, as always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye.